Hello, I'm Tom Sorrell. Uh, I'm professor at the University of Warwick. Um, I'm one of the authors of the uh, Digital Risk Management uh, course material, um, and alongside uh, uh, Duncan Hyde, a colleague of mine from the Institute of Cybersecurity at Warwick University, we've put together the uh, study guide, um, the materials for the course. Um, uh, perhaps the question that you were asking is, what am I going to get from the course? What am I going to get from the uh, Digital uh, Risk Management Certificate? And um, I would say that the answer to that is um, competence in uh, uh, conceptualizing some questions about uh, digital innovation in business and also uh, understanding of some of the risks that are associated with uh, cybersecurity uh, in uh, uh, business and in the public sector uh, as well. Tom, can you tell me what the aims are for Digital Risk Management Certificate? Uh, yes, um, the certificate takes someone from almost no uh, knowledge of um, digital business or um, cyber security uh, to understanding quite a lot of the issues, the technologies, that are uh, involved in it and some of the risks that are associated with cybersecurity. It does that in a, in a relatively short period. Um, there, are, there are three things that are covered that I think are particularly important uh, to emphasize. Um, these are digital risks. One kind of digital risk is to do with uh, the risks of collecting and storing data. Um, here the risk is the risk of loss, the risk of uh, corruption of data, um, and especially of personal data. Uh, a second uh, issue is risk associated with monetizing the data that one's collected or uh, making use of, of that data in a way that's saleable. Uh, that's another kind of risk. And then there are risks associated with uh, protecting the platforms um, that are storing the data and from which one's selling uh, digital products. Those are the three main risks. Um, the course also looks at the, the uh, range of technologies that are associated uh, with um, digital uh, uh, commerce and with uh, the storage of data in the public sector. Um, some of these technologies are uh, robotics, uh, manufacturing robotics, as well as robotics uh, used in medicine, um, automated cars, um, high-speed translation, machine translation from one language to another, the sort of thing one gets in a crude form on Google, uh, GPS tracking and location, and the many technologies that are based on GPS tracking and location, um, and gaming technology. Um, I should mention also artificial intelligence. Um, artificial intelligence is used in a number of uh, uh, technologies that are covered in the course. Uh, it's used, for example, in um, some of the financial technology that is um, uh, covered in the course, um, and it's used in um, some of the medical uh, technology that's discussed. For example, in cancer diagnostics, um, machines learn the differences between malignant and benign cells uh, by looking at lots of annotated uh, versions of these cells cells uh, images that have been annotated by experts and it learns to distinguish as the experts do between malignant and benign uh, cells. Um, so that's a, a, a particularly clear application of artificial intelligence in this area. So Tom, you mentioned that the course will take someone from relatively little awareness of digital risk to an understanding of the main types and sources of digital risk. Um, can you expand on that for me please? Sure. Um, if we go back to the, uh, the two main themes in the course, on the one hand, um, the risks associated with doing business with digital content or doing business on digital platforms. Um, uh, one example of a, of a risk uh, that uh, we might think of here is what happens when a company loses data, uh, loses customer data, what effects that has on reputation, um, how it uh, impacts on um, regulatory compliance and uh, things of that sort. Um, and then uh, to look at the uh, cybersecurity part of the course, 
um, the uh, uh, risks there are risks of allowing access uh, to data within an organization. There are risks of um, uh, sabotage from hackers uh, and denial of service attacks where one's business is no longer able to be conducted because um, the technology is paralyzed by an external attack. Those would be um, uh, types of risks that are that materialize and that are discussed in some of the case studies uh, in the book, um, uh, in the books. And maybe we should just mention uh, the the two books in in the course um, uh, that we use. Uh, we use um, uh, two books. One is called The Second Machine Age, and the other is Cybersecurity for Beginners. Um, the the Second Machine Age is really associated with uh, uh, digital uh, risk and with uh, disruptive digital risk in particular, because what that book does is to run through many different kinds of innovations that have been commercially successful um, and uh, talks basically about the risks of not <laughs> being familiar uh, with digital techniques for, for selling and digital techniques for um, uh, accomplishing some of the tasks that are currently done with people, say, in the manufacturing sector. It's basically saying that uh, with uh, the use of digital techniques and digital technologies, uh, there have been tremendous, almost uh, world historical changes in productivity, um, in the amount of data that we can get for free, in services that we can get for free, and also perhaps in the dislocation of employment markets and the dislocation of retail markets. Some of the problems with retail markets are well known. Uh, bricks and mortar businesses have higher expenses than some digital businesses. They're driven out of business by digital businesses. Those are among the, uh, the kinds of disruption that we uh, were uh, looking at in the course. What are the learning outcomes um, that the student should achieve by the end of the course, Tom? Um, uh, there are uh, lots of uh, specific uh, learning outcomes, um, but um, if we go back to the main themes of the course, on the one hand, uh, digital disruption and the way that uh, new digital techniques revolutionize business, um, there are learning outcomes associated with that and with the understanding of risk in that area, and there are other risks associated with cybersecurity uh, that's with the protection of, of uh, data against certain forms of attack and so on. If we just go uh, more systematically through that, um, uh, unit by unit, um, in unit one, um, the learning outcomes are really uh, that people become uh, familiar with um, some of the new capacities uh, that digital technology has, uh, the amount of data that they're able to store, uh, the way that computing power has been increasing over long periods of time and the consequences of that. And there are a few um, very novel technologies that are discussed in some detail. Um, one is distributed ledger technology, which is um, uh, an instance of which is a blockchain. A blockchain is a way of tracking tra transactions over a long period of time and making sure that transactions cannot be undone um, that reduces fraud in business uh, quite a lot, and it's a very modern uh, technology that's used in real estate transactions and banking. Um, unit two um, it goes back to the digital disruption theme that we've already talked about, and it, it also talks about um, risk management in general terms, um, as well as ethics. Um, so digital disruption we've already uh, mentioned, um, uh, ethics uh, comes into the course mainly through the sorts of uh, dislocation of employment markets and other kinds of, of uh, markets that um, digital uh, commerce involves. If we imagine, uh, for example, that many factories are going to be populated by robots and very few people, uh, we know that there's going to be an employment revolution or an unemployment revolution that's associated with digital technology, that raises a lot of ethical issues. For example, how we distribute income in, um, uh, in uh, economies where not everybody is employed as uh, there used to be. Um, there are, of course, lots of issues to do with uh, privacy, 
when a lot of personal data is in circulation and used by different kinds of, of organizations, commercial organizations on the one hand, and state organizations, governmental organizations on the other, um, special protections for personal data uh, need to be uh, established and enforced, but establishing and enforcing them is difficult. Um, data can be um, uh, stolen uh, from one jurisdiction by people in another jurisdiction. Um, uh, people with great uh, computing skills can be very much more dangerous uh, than other people. Um, all of these uh, raise issues about the, the, the kinds of measures that should be taken against um, threat actors, some of which may not be ethical. That's a, a kind of indication of where the ethical issues come in. And of course, uh, in Unit 2, we also have the, the general introduction to uh, risk management tools in general. Um, uh, in Unit 3, we have those tools redefined uh, for digital uh, matters uh, to a great uh, degree. Um, we talk about some of the um, entrepreneurial risks that uh, emerge distinctively in uh, digital uh, commerce. And we also uh, talk about um, risks that uh, arise from outsourcing various services um, in, uh, in business um, today. Uh, those are particular risks that uh, only arise in digital um, uh, commerce and in uh, digital management of, uh, of uh, activity in the public sector. Um, so that takes us through three units of the course, and the remaining units of the course are um, following the second set book, which is um, Cybersecurity for Beginners. Uh, Cybersecurity for Beginners takes uh, people systematically through various uh, techniques um, for identifying which data assets are particularly valuable to an organization, which therefore need to be protected the most, and it then gives you uh, various kinds of techniques for keeping them protected. Uh, some of the techniques include various strategies for password protection uh, and password composition. Uh, there are, are measures discussed for preventing insider threats where employees or other uh, people within an organization are able to steal uh, passwords, for example, or steal um, access uh, to important kinds of data or blackmail people who have that information into disclosing it. Um, there are other issues, again, that are to do with uh, cyber attacks that are illustrated by those um, uh, case studies that are, are uh, uh, reviewed in cybersecurity for beginners. Um, uh, finally, in, in Unit 6, um, after lots of those threats have been talked about, um, different techniques for uh, managing cybersecurity within an organization are discussed. So this would, um, this would indicate the kinds of roles that have to exist within an organization um, for different cyber risks to be anticipated and for um, certain security measures to be properly embedded uh, within a company or uh, you know, the National Health Service, something like that. Um, so by the end of the course, if we, if we look at all of these learning outcomes, um, uh, you would be, on the one hand, able to name some techniques for managing passwords, for example, other techniques for identifying uh, information assets that absolutely must not be lost um, or corrupted. Uh, you'd be uh, also looking at business risks of conducting um, uh, retail activity, for example, online rather than in a bricks and mortar environment. Um, you'd be looking at um, different ways of personalizing services by understanding um, the data of customers and the risks that that uh, poses, for example, regulatory risks, uh, data protection risks, and, and so on. And you'd also have an overview of the new technologies and the way that uh, uh, those technologies have changed and expanded uh, and computing capacities associated with them have expanded over the last few decades. So what I understand is the course isn't designed to turn the student into an IT specialist. Um, so what is it designed to achieve? You're right, it doesn't turn people into an IT specialist. Um, what it does do, I think, is give people confidence 
uh, to um, uh, talk about and recognize uh, some of the risks that they're going to encounter. Um, so it takes one from a position where one is uh, completely dependent and a bit helpless in the face of some of these risks and feels one has to consult somebody who is a specialist. It takes one from that position of helplessness or unfamiliarity to a position where one's able um, to come up with um, some of the main sorts of risks and to be comfortable that one's able to identify them. In other words, it takes a field that is obscure to most people and perhaps a bit scary to most people and tames it a bit and enables people to, to feel more at home with it and enables them to conduct their uh, job uh, knowing what the risks might be and not being surprised uh, if they materialize and knowing that there are techniques that have been developed that are effective uh, for, for dealing with them that this course uh, points to. Thank you, Tom.